Perfect. Yeah, so I've got a little Manchi reference. You can see our goal, but I think you guys all also have these cute little Manchi pillows. So this is our, our model for today. Um, so if you've got your supplies, that's great. I will kind of talk for a minute. And if you have a chance, you can use whatever. Um, I'm going to do it digitally, but I'm going to draw it in a way that you don't have to undo or redraw because I love to draw with marker a lot of the time and a lot of that kind of inspired the feel of some of the look of the movie so i'll be doing it digitally but i'm going to kind of start in a way that you don't have to erase so if you'd rather use pencils so that you can be sure what it looks like and ink it later that's fine but if you want to dive in with a marker or a crayon feel free to do that too okay um yeah so manchi he's like one of our favorite characters. He's kind of like this wonderful, lovable mascot for the family. And like everybody, kind of this unlikely hero and kind of imperfect and in flawed and flawed. Um, the shapes are all really hand drawn. So for the nose, we're going to start. We'll start with that. We'll kind of start with whatever is most forward. So I just kind of draw the simple shape. It's almost like it's a, how you would draw a heart simply, but kind of with three little shapes to it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the fun thing about the whole look of the movie is we are really trying to make it feel handmade and human made. So if things aren't perfectly symmetrical or perfectly made, that's great. That's what we were trying to chase in the computer. So that's his little nose. And then we'll just draw like a little kind of half circle around it. Um, watch all of his features are really scrunched together. Um, so it's kind of important for him to like draw things in the order that they're uh, forward in space. So we'll draw that. Then we'll draw his eyes. So I'll start with the left eye. I'm just going to draw a circle and I'm going to try to end it where the where the nose line stopped. And then I'm going to go on the other side and draw another circle. Um, so Manchi's got these kind of big wall-eyed eyes. It's kind of a part of the movie, right? That his, he can't look straight, he can't see perfectly. And then in his, in the end of the movie, there's a moment for him to kind of shine and, uh, and achieve this like clear vision that lets him have this kind of hero's moment. So whenever we draw Manchi, we draw his pupils really offset. So you can do it any direction you like, but like, I'll try, I'll make one looking down, you know, and I'll do it, um, I'll color it in to so just make it black. Sometimes it helps if they're more on the outside to draw them a little bit more of an oval than a perfect circle. It helps it exaggerate the direction he's looking. So since I drew it on this bottom corner, on the other one, I'll do it at the opposite angle. So I'll put it here at the top. And again, when you're drawing these, you can put them how you like. If one's in, if I were to put one in the middle, the other one I might just maybe exaggerate more and maybe it's more low to the side. It's part of what helps make Manchi look kind of funny is this little wall-eyed character trait. Um, so from there, I'm gonna draw his mouth, these jowls. So I'll just start on one side. Um, I'm gonna kind of start the lower part of the eye and I'm just gonna aim to make a curve that's gonna end um, lining up with the nose. So I'm just going to do a shape like that. And again, these don't have to be totally perfect, clean shapes. It's again, part of the look of the movie that we want these kind of imperfect, irregular forms. And then I'm going to do one on the other side, starting from there and then meeting back up and ending at the eye. And once you've done that, we can go in, we can give him his little eyebrows. So these are, they're not going to be too thick. Sometimes when his brows get kind of thick, he can look a little angry. So we're just going to give him little, yeah, little eyebrows, not, not too big, but they're going to kind of be curvy and full and follow the shape of his eye. They're going to, we're going to leave a little bit of space in the middle of the, the nose and do a little curve. So from here, let's do, let's do, we can do the top of his forehead. So I'm gonna try to do this in run, one line. If you want, you could do like a little kind of semicircle curve. It's nice when all of his shapes are kind of curvy, but he also has this little tuft of hair that works. So I'm gonna kind of start drawing a curve, but then I'm gonna bring it and do a little curve in the other direction. I'll do probably two for a little curve of hair. 
then I'll finish that curved line. And the next we can do is ears, kind of like everything. It helps when they're kind of curved slightly different directions. They don't have to be exactly the same. So I'll do, I guess I'll do a simple little kind of like a C shape. We can start with that. And then I'm gonna do another little curve coming out from that. So he's got this little dent in his ear. And then I'm just gonna bring it around and kind of copy that first shape I'd started. So that's kind of getting his ear and the ear flap curving down. And then I'm just gonna draw a little, it could be a straight line or you can curve it, but I'm just gonna bring a line down. Yeah, and there's his little ear. For the ears too, you can do them. Sometimes I'll just draw them really quick and do little shapes. They can, you can do a lot of things with them. So don't worry too much if it's not perfect. We could also try doing one on this other side. I'm usually gonna have them coming up from behind his eyebrows. This one, let me try doing a little shape like this. And on this one, maybe I'll just add a little line to indicate the form. But they're kind of fun when they're kind of pointing in different directions and stuff like that. And let's get into finishing the mouth. So we'll give him a tongue. Machi has a tongue. Sometimes we'll have his mouth open with a long hanging tongue. It's kind of fun if it goes off to the side. You can put it in the middle, to the side, long. But I'll do something. Let me see. I'll draw uh, kind of like a U shape. But as I come up, I'll just give it a little bend for fun. Sometimes it's kind of fun to give it some irregularity. It helps with his personality. You could also, if you wanted, you could do a really simple little tongue, like a little U shape. I think the important thing is to have fun with it. I think for us making this movie, we all love making art and have fun making art. And we wanted it to feel like that on screen that you feel like this is celebrating characters like Katie and people that love to have art and have fun with it and express themselves with it. Um, I usually too for the tongue, sometimes I'll draw like a little line in the middle of it to give it a little bit of form. And then from here, you can finish up the bottom of his mouth with a little semicircle. So since his tongue's here, I'll just do it from underneath. You don't need to see the whole thing. And then on his little, on his little jowls, he's got these little hand-drawn kind of dimples on there. So those I usually draw just by doing kind of simple U shapes that loop together. Three is probably enough. You can do more if you want. I'll give him another one. Maybe the bottom is a little smaller. And I will give him more on this side, just a few little curves. And a few little curves again. And now we can give him, after you've done that, you can give him some, some whiskers. Sometimes I'll just do a few, uh, you know, I stick them on the side. I'll just put a few little curves. And then on the other side, you do a few more little curves. And there's, there's a little munchy head. So we can do the whole, the whole body too, if you guys want to try that. <laughs> and let me know too, I hope I'm not going too fast. I know I'm, 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 I'm used to drawing him often. So sorry if I'm going fast. Um, one thing too that I'll take a break to talk for a second. One thing that's kind of nice about this style is we are just really trying to kind of 
make really lovable appealing characters but also kind of celebrate imperfection like when i was hopping into this i was like oh my i irritated in my hand i was like last night just scrubbing my like my bathroom floor trying to get these stains out of the grout with a toothbrush and working and i irritated my hand i was like oh man my hand's gonna be sore to draw but i feel like that's so much of what the movie we were trying not to filter out like real people have real spaces and real homes and real life and all this stuff and so like we are a little imperfect and that's like why our characters kind of have these like wrinkly shirt collars and their hoodies have kind of the tilled fabric because all of those things are like the signs of our life and things we like and love and stuff so we were trying not to filter that out so even i was realizing like oh yeah like i'm really proud though that i got all those little stains out my hands a little sore and my lines might be a little less perfect but that's kind of the whole thing we were trying to do with all of the shape language and stuff and even though we make these movies in the computer it's nice if you can feel a human hand and that's kind of two way some of the look kind of feels kind of painterly and it all feels kind of hand drawn is because we just love celebrating the human uh craft of making art um but anyway so i'll hop into doing a little bit of a body um i might do him standing because it's kind of fun to see him as this little kind of loaf of bread character so um i'm going to end up drawing a body over to the to the right side and he's kind of this, I'll draw over to the side to show you. He's a little bit of like a, a bean shape when we draw him. So, but I'm gonna start to, for, for him, we want him to feel really full and these forms against forms. So I'm gonna draw over here a simple little curve that's gonna be at the connection of his head to his body. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm gonna scale this. I've got enough room. Um, Hopefully you guys aren't running out of space, but um, if you are, you could do, you know, do a body on another, on another drawing. But um, so I'm gonna do that little curve and that's kind of implying his neck area. Um, and it's there to imply that he's really full. And this kind of full loaf of bread character. And then I'm gonna kind of arch, I'll just do this quick so you can see this kind of curved C shape to kind of imply this part of this bean on his body. And then I'm gonna come around and do a big curve. down there and then i'm going to give him another curve here it's kind of overlapping maybe i should draw the legs first but i think it'll be okay um so i'll give him a little a little leg it could be a simple straight leg but maybe if you if you want you can do like a little little tuft of hair and then a little straight leg. We could also just do little simple straight legs. For him in his 3D model, we got rid of a lot of anatomy and they're supposed to be these kind of like simple little legs, like simple drawings. So you can just do little straight lines. Um, and then we'll draw kind of three little circles for his feet. And another three for his little toes. And let me give him another little one over here. A couple lines for his leg and these kind of little simple toes. And I'll give him another one. I'm kind of angling some of these lines too, just to just make it a little funny. And I probably should have drawn these first. Sometimes you make little mistakes, but if you have a pencil and you want to, if you want to erase this, you can, but it's okay if, if you don't. And then we'll give him a little tail. So we'll just give him a little, a little kind of half circle curve. And then we'll bring it around. And then we give him a little extra tuft of hair. Some of these little simple tufts of hairs help. And there's a little, and there's a little manchi. So from here, you can, you, we can color him in. Um, he's not too many colors. If you've got um, brown, yellow, and pink, that's probably enough. Um, so I'm gonna, I, I'm just gonna kind of color them in with you guys. Doesn't quite matter where you start. I'm just gonna start on his little, uh, I eyebrow area so his eyebrows and his little mouth area are all brown
I'm doing this digitally so I could fill it in, but I'm just gonna kind of color it in like it were traditional media. In the movie, we did a lot of stuff like that too, where instead of using the conveniences of the computer tools that do things kind of perfectly, we tried to make them feel like they're handmade. So sometimes in like the texturing of clothes or maybe fur, we're trying to imitate um, what traditional mark making does digitally. Like for example, when you're, I just edited my tools in the computer but when you draw traditionally, when your marks, when they layer up, they get this kind of irregularity of pattern of the lines layering up. And we think that's really beautiful. So we tried to imitate that in the computer. You know, and it's what a pen, what a marker, what a crayon does naturally. And so we just really like what that, that handmade stuff looks like. So a lot of the times in the computer, we're trying to imitate what you get naturally with a traditional material. I'm just gonna keep coloring. I'm gonna color his little ears. And while we're coloring too, if you guys have any questions, uh, let me let me know. We can keep talking. It's so amazing just to watch how this comes to life. I unfortunately am not an artist. <laughs> and just to see how, you know, a couple circles and a couple dots, like, and you add so much character and so much um, personality into- Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you can see his personality jumping off the page right now. It's just fascinating. Oh, and I, thank I, you. I, love, I love that it's not a computer generated, um, a computer generated because it feels more real. It feels like you can, I guess I said, it feels like he's just a character and he's so much fun. Awesome, um, thank you, yeah. Taddy, I think you had a question. Did you wanna ask Lindsay? Hi Lindsay, this, this is Hi. such a fun session. Thank you so much. I was curious to know if you had um, a favorite Mitchell's character to draw. Um, it's hard. I like a lot, like all of them for different reasons. I, I, I think Manchi is a lot of fun because he's kind of one of the funniest just being himself. You know, like when I was first designing him, that was kind of the challenge that I put on myself is that I wanted to like look at a drawing and it make me laugh. Um, so there's something that's always been really fun about him. Um, so maybe him and maybe Katie too. I think there's a lot about her. She's one of, she's kind of our main character. Um, so she was a really fun one to draw and design and get right. I think there's a lot of little specific details on her that really speak to her character. So those guys might be some of my favorites, yeah. Um, I think Tessa and her, uh, her kids have a quick question for you, Lindsay. Uh -huh. um, how did you get started as an animator? Um, I always, uh, if I go back early enough, I always loved to draw when I was around your age, probably I was drawing a ton. I would draw my own characters too. Uh, my parents were really supportive of the arts. And so I did a lot of drawing my own characters, trying to make my own little stories. Um, I took art classes outside of school um, where I kind of learned an appreciation of the arts and a little bit of like art history about painting and stuff. And then I ultimately went to college for computer animation. And so there I learned a little bit more about what a job in animation was like. Um, I should also say in high school, I went to one of the schools, CalArts, which is where the director studied. They had a summer program for high school kids. And so I went to that. And that was the first time I got to really learn about how to animate because I hadn't really understood actually how to animate. I think it's nice now there's a lot more like access to tools, things online. When I was a kid, we, the internet wasn't what it is today at all. So there's always like things to find. So I always look for opportunities and my parents helped me look for opportunities to learn more about art and animation and the behind the scenes. I remember going when I was a kid to a mall and they had a Pocahontas animator there showing people how to draw Pocahontas, Pocahontas and seeing an artist behind the movies was really inspiring for me to see that people like, you know, meeting people that do it. 
so it's great too that if you guys are in events like this, I think your parents are, you know, if you want to go to the art, it seems obviously very supportive. Um, but yeah, so then I went to college for computer animation. And from there, I got a job in animation. And that just kind of led to one job after the other to ultimately jobs doing character design and then, you know, jobs doing uh, production design, which is another one of my titles, which is just kind of being responsible for the, the look of the movie. Thank you. Yeah, they both love art yeah. and draw their own I, comic I actually, books all the time. I yeah, so. awesome. We went to this art, I actually remember one time we went to this art class and I made um this cool donut thing and it was like a and it was like a summer art class thing. Yeah. And it was mm -hmm. like uh, I think four or five weeks. It was. It was like a whole summer every week. Oh cool. Yeah. Very cool. That's so yeah, that's so fun. It's so fun like getting different projects to it's fun to make your own art, but sometimes you're in these settings where you get an assignment or some project to do and you do things you wouldn't have thought of, or maybe you tr try with a medium that you wouldn't have thought of, and or maybe with other people and they might inspire you in different ways. So all, all of those, yeah, activities are super inspiring. It's super cool that you guys are doing that. We also have a question from Michelle Carroll from um Kate Congeniality for you. Michelle, you want to ask Lindsay? Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Hi, Lindsay. Thank you for spending the time with us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, how long did it take to animate the movie from start to finish? I know it must be a huge undertaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's so the process from very start to finish, it was maybe five and a half years. Um, and that's not to necessarily animate it. You go through a couple of phases. So the first few years were a really small team. Like the first year, it was just me and the director, basically, where he was coming up with the idea. And it was an idea that was on like five pages. And then I did character designs for it. And then he'd work and he'd write. And then eventually he had a co-writer. So the first year is basically him writing and working it out. And then I would help and do some art. Then we got some more artists on the team and storyboard artists, which are really valuable. And they'll take the script and they'll do simple, it looks like animation almost, but simple drawings and they'll draw out the whole movie. And so then that process happens for another couple of years maybe. Um, and then you go into production. So the production is when you start bringing on the 3D team and animators. And that takes about two years, two to three years normally. Um, I think on our project, it was about a little, yeah, maybe two and a half years. And that's when you're really animating it. And you're still sometimes working on the story and the story artists are still working and the art team is still working, but then you're a really big team with a lot of people. And that process is, yeah, like two and a half years. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys, I'm actually gonna take us off screen share because we wanna see the creations that you guys did. Oh, good. And I um, love to see what everyone came up with. And then, you know, our film's writer and director, Michael has joined us too. So we're gonna loop him in so we can keep the conversation going. Awesome. Everyone, <laughs> let's see them. Oh my oh, God. I love them, oh my God. Look at all the amazing artists. I'm so impressed. So cool. I love these. <laughs> and every single one of them have such personality, just mm -hmm. like Manchi. I love them, they're so good. I love that. Thank you guys, it's so cute. Well, as I mentioned, we have um, Michael Rianda, who's the film's writer and director. And he, along with Lindsay, are gonna answer a bunch of your questions. So I'm gonna kind of go through and call on you guys and um, we'll get every one of you to ask a question. So. We're going to start first with um, Kathy Cupcake from Live with uh, Live with Kathy. Kathy, what are you impressed and got on store for us? Oh my God, we not we love the Mitchell so much. He's watching it again right now. This is oh, a amazing. movie that is on repeat in our house, and I don't know if you can hear. Um, Pal is about to come on, <laughs> take over <laughs> the world. But I wanted to know a few things actually. One is Monty's are honestly our favorite character, and I want to know. How did Manchi evolve into Manchi? How many phases did you go through to figure out this is the look we want? Because when um, the mom says, I, I think you can, and she tries to, and his eyes are, it's the best. It's absolutely the best because <laughs> honestly, that's my kid. It's like, I always uh, look at him and go, I know you can, I know you can. I'm like, this is so relatable. So Manchi is not only the, the pet, part, but it's, it's another child in the family. So I wanted yeah. to know the evolution of Manchi and how you finalized this Manchi. I get, well, I can speak to the creation of Manchi and then Lindsay could talk about designing this creature. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, 
uh, basically, Manchi is a real dog. Um, comes from a real dog name name that was originally named Maggie, but then my sister changed its name to Manchi. She's like, she seems more like a Manchi. She's got a lot of chaotic energy. Um, and Manchi was like very wall-eyed um, and very uh, was not quite as plump as the eventual Manchi. I think that the fatter dogs are the cuter they are. Um, uh, so that was that was part of the calculus there. But um, but but the initial Manchi was just like really earnest and was trying her best and was not that good. <laughs> um, uh, couldn't really do anything, had to go to the vet a lot, um, but we really loved her. Um, and then, so when we uh, had the Mitchells, I, I just, I really wanted to put a, a pug in a movie and also a pug in a movie that looked like a real pug. Cause sometimes I feel like the pugs look kind of, they stand, stand the edges off, but pugs are bizarre creatures that maybe shouldn't exist. Um, so uh so we just like let Lindsay um rip into it and uh and she she just started drawing a, a hundred of the best pug designs you've ever seen in your life <laughs> thank you thank you i could actually screen share some i was like i think i've got this handy oh please but, do the best. yeah I'll, oh wait i don't know if i can actually anymore but um but basically yeah it's like what mike said mike, mike always has like a great vision for how the character should feel so it makes my job easy because i have like a good sense of like what their character is like like what their personality is like um and for him it was yeah it was really okay, there it goes it was really getting at the right mix of something that was like cute but lovable and some we we've played with getting these weirdnesses of the pugs but some they get like a little too weird or too creature like. So we've got some of these. Sometimes that are they of... were tragic. <laughs> yeah, that was Mike when I was talking about that. Like with him, it couldn't look too, yeah, too tragic or too mean. You know, you needed to really like love them too. So it's like we try to get that balance. And some of that came with simplicity. Some of them, there's a little too much, uh, too much information and stuff. And we found you can reduce a lot and it still feels like, like a pug. But we really just wanted him to feel really like joyful and funny and he's a little silly. We looked a lot at like the postures of pugs and animals. And also just, yeah, he's really kind of like this little plump character, kind of plump, squishy, doughy, yeah. bread-like. And we also found that he also needed to always be smiling because it made mm -hmm. him seem like he was having a good time and he was okay with all this. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. he would be like frowning and then like, oh, oh. <laughs> it was like, oh, this. this he's guy's... awesome. He's scared. <laughs> he's awesome. He really, he really is awesome. And I agree, he is like another, another child. He's so cute. Um, our next question is gonna come from Carrie Pittman and her girls with, with uh, Living With Littles. Hello. So my question is, um, well, actually, first of all, as much as this film has us laughing, it also had me crying like through so many parts of it, the dynamics of children right. and teenagers and, um, parents it's just a struggle right my question is to you do you have teenagers of your own that you related to in writing this um, movie um yeah i, I think um, mostly ourselves uh when we're teenagers um uh just because it's like i sort of feel close to the 17 year old version of myself um and i also wanted to point out just i didn't say i only said it in the chat but i saw these manchi drawings you guys are all hired Whatever the next project is, you guys can do the drawings. These are so wonderful. Um, uh, but um, <clears throat> but yeah, no, I, I sort of, you know, I, I think it was based on a lot of people. You know, my sister um, is really funny, like Katie, um, and sort of shares a lot of um, her sort of like, you know, she kind of like, you know, her and my dad would butt heads now and then. And, and, and I did think that was important to show, you know, honestly, the realistic problems that families have because you know, I, I don't think, I think it's easy to smooth over that stuff, but then you, you're you not talking about real people anymore <laughs> because real people have problems with each other. Um, and and I think, um, and just, just in terms of like, you know, teenagers and stuff, it, we were trying to sort of really get the excitement of like, oh, I'm moving to the next phase of my life. Cause that was like, I remember how exciting that was. And it was like, anything could happen. I could be a, you know, a skateboarder, maybe, uh, maybe I'll be in a band, maybe I'll be a cartoonist, whatever. I picked the lamest of those three. Um, <laughs> but, um, but it was, um, but it was, it was really an exciting time. So we tried to capture that excitement and optimism with Katie, as well as like how, you know, you can really have legitimate problems with your family members and, and, and hopefully model productive ways to work this out. <laughs> 
Uh, thank you so much, Carrie. Um, we have a question from Monica Young and her family from My Life is a Journey. Hi, good morning. Uh, my niece, uh, she doesn't speak a lot of English, but she wanted to know uh, with the DVD, now you have a lot of deleted scenes. Yes. But one of the deleted scenes that are here, which one would you have liked to be in the original film? Oh, that's a great question. I mean, you know, the funny thing is, I love all those deleted scenes. They are my children and I, I, I wish them the best and I want them to go into the world. Um, but I will say, I'm kind of happy they're all gone <laughs> because even though I think they're really funny individually and I'm, I'm proud of them just watching them as a scene on its own. But I will say the, taking them out made the movie better. The one, the, one, um, the one that sort of like entertains me the most because it's so, sort of the one that's the most different from the movie is uh, there's a scene where the family as a family together and I tried to write it as much like, oh, it's like, you know, you and your family and your kids and your weird uncle have to literally kidnap the president of the United States of America. Um, but the movie, uh, the movie didn't have, um, uh, could not support that uh, <laughs> storyline. It was too, it was too like, it was too much of a weird left turn. Um, but that's the one that I think is funny. Amazing. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, our next question is going to come from Ella and Addison from EH June Fun and look at their version of Monty that they have in their house. <laughs> Let me see this. Let me see this. <laughs> He's beautiful. Oh, how cute are you? Um, oh my Ella God, Madison, the best. Un 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 <laughs> unmute yourself so we can, oh, look at all the pugs coming out. Oh, oh my God. Pugs, 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 pugs. Um, Ella and Addison, do you guys have a question for Michael or for Lindsay? Yes. Actually, both of them. So how long did it take to make an animated film? Um, I will say it took a really long... How old are you? <laughs> Nine. Okay, you would have been three when we started. <laughs> so more than half your life. Um, no, uh, it, 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 took a, it took a long time. I don't think they always take as long of a time. I think, you know, because this is a movie about, um, you know, it's not about X-Men. It's about uh, uh, my father, who is the farthest thing you can get from an X-Man as humanly possible. Um, uh, it, it sort of, it was like a big, it was a big um, ask of the studio, which like rightfully so, they wanna make sure that anyone's gonna care about this weird story. So, um, so for a long time, we just had to prove that the movie would exist. And I, you know, like Lindsay had already done this great work and all of our team had already done this great work. And I was like, we have to make it. So this is an all in vain. Um, and uh, and and so so we were probably only like really really making the movie for the last three years. So that was probably how long it really took. But there was a but the movie the whole time was getting better. And that is sort of like a lesson if your guys are making something. And you know kids are great because they never get discouraged. They're like I made this drawing and it's wonderful. Um, but I will just say as you get older, don't lose that um, because I remember a time when I was like eight or nine and I got really aware that I like, I wasn't as good at drawing as like the cool guys that do comic books. And then I got all weird and self-conscious and I was like, ah, my drawings are terrible. Um, and I didn't draw for a long time, but, um, but your drawings are great. Any expression of your um, own emotions is wonderful, no matter what it looks like. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. Such a positive thing. Um, our next question is gonna come from Ashley Saunders from Ashley and Co. Hi. Hi. Hello. Um, like, uh, did did you have fun making the movie? And yes. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, think, I think it was it was really it was really delightful, and and I, Lindsay can speak to this, but one of the most fun things is that you get to hire a bunch of people that then become your friends sometimes nice. uh, <laughs> and um uh if they want to hang out with you which when you're the boss they don't um but uh but it, and it's really wonderful to work with all of them and 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 hang out with them and kick around ideas and they'll come up with things that surprise you and and that that was the most fun part of it is the friends we made along the way <laughs> yeah no i totally agree it's really fun like I always loved to make art and I made a lot of art and it was mostly by myself. Like I make it with my sister sometimes, but it was, it's nice when you're, yeah, when you're doing it as a job, like what Mike was saying, you get to build these teams. And so I had like an art team that had 10, 15 people and they all became really good friends. I feel like I formed these really great friendships with other 
artists on the team and my other kind of art director and people. And so it's really fun to be able to make something better than you ever could on your own with other people. And then you end up forming these friendships that last after the movie. And when we watch the movie, we can see all of our friends in it. And so it yeah. makes it kind of extra special too. Yeah, you can form your child friends together to make some sort of Voltron of creativity. <laughs> And then, uh, you know, uh, uh, make the world better with your art. I love the bold time <laughs> reference. I love that. Um, our next question is going to come from Megan Cooper from Jaw Monkey. Hey there. So Katie Vision is one of my favorite aspects of the whole film. And can you talk a little bit about your decision to help, ha like, have Katie essentially animate and tell her story in the film? Well, can I talk about your amazing sweatshirt? Um, it's <laughs> wonderful and you're nailing it. all right you look great the hair beautiful compliment complimentary colors I love it um, uh, but no um Katie Vision was sort of a just sort of like a uh, uh an idea on a whiteboard because we were like what wouldn't it be cool to match because we were sort of like film students you know we we, we didn't we had no business making a movie <laughs> that's another lesson uh you know don't don't you don't have to if you really want to do something, just do it. Um, don't wait for somebody to be like, now you are allowed to do this thing. Um, uh, but but anyway, um, uh, uh, Katie Vision. So we were we got really excited. Like, what if we mix 2D with 3D? Oh my God, it'd be incredible. Um, and then it got, and then we got distracted because it's really, really hard to make a movie good. Um, just normally without any sort of bells and whistles. Um, but then um, but then Lindsay uh, sort of made this incredible um, uh test over the weekend when she was supposed to be doing other work and everyone was mad at her because they're like you're not hitting your deadlines but you're like oh, i'm doing this other exciting thing um <laughs> and it was really cool because it we realized that it like it made us feel closer to katie as a character so it it kind of worked in the story um that, that it was almost like she was editing the movie so so all of a sudden you felt closer to her and and you guys made all these like wonderful um where you got you got to literally just like draw on the screen and stuff right yeah, yeah, totally. It's like, it was funny, yeah, that was kind of talked about and I was seeing, cause I'm working closely with the art and the look of the movie and then there's the story team and whether it was like seeing their uh, like ideas for Katie's videos and conversation with Mike and Mike's ideas. It felt like it was so important to see Katie as a filmmaker. And so when we were figuring out and kind of getting the uh, this whole studio to kind of agree with the look of our movie, it felt like we had this missing piece. So we had the kind of the look of what our human world is and it's imperfect look. And then this kind of slick, cool, bold robot look. And I always felt like there's this Katie world to address. And so we had a lot of ideas from seeing these kind of fun puppet videos and all these explorations that the story team was doing. And so I kind of found this way that like, let's bring that into those moments, but also throughout the movie, can we have 2D animations pop up throughout to really enhance that feeling of her. And we kind of worked on how do we kind of have a plan of how it is charted all throughout the movie. So it's always kind of supporting her story. And so then once we kind of talked about that and talked about how it supports her emotional core, I think everyone got excited about it. So it was something that then we knew we wanted <laughs> to do throughout. And it was a lot of fun. And we built a lot of little puppets. These are, um, these are some of the puppets. Yeah. <laughs> this, is one. This, is, this is used in the actual movie. You yeah, know, yeah. made on cardboard. This is Katie's. Uh, her pupils have been lost to time. <laughs> and then this is the um, pterodactyl, uh, which you can see, we always talk about this, but it has these, it's literally, its hands are these little forks that we stole from the cafeteria um, because we didn't have any money to make puppets. So we just did stuff like this. Um, but it was really cool. And, and it sort of like, it made, it made us get in the headspace of, of like, you know, somebody with, only a few dollars to go to Michael's on the weekend and uh, you know make some weird stuff so um, so and that's another part of it that, that's cool and sort of like reminds you of what's of what's great about being a kid is you you kind of you're not like oh is this the official way that someone needs to do something it's like no it's fun that looks funny look it's a weird cheese ball with a face on I don't know next thing you know so so I guess to say I would uh, don't be ashamed of your ideas you know they're cooler than you think they're. yeah and part of the spirit of some of this stuff too it's like I think there was a time that it was like oh we're not going to be able to do this with live action puppets because that's a different division or live action we can't do that but with technology things are so accessible and we have like a layer of that in the studio with like I use my camera and we put it into After Effects 
but it's even way more accessible than that because you can film things on your phone. There's apps that are way more affordable than even the ones we're using. So it's like, that's that spirit that we're tapping into because we talk about cell phones in our movie and a big part of that is like the creative stuff you can do on them. And so for you guys too, what you can access with filming something on your phone, bringing it into another app and making things. It's like that, that spirit of like what you can do now, what you can access with technology to make your own stories, make your own films is something that we were kind of playing with. And it's fun, you know, if you guys are interested in that to, to take that yeah, spirit to your own work. It's fun. Just do it on a weekend. And yeah. even, if you're, even if it's not good, you'll still have fun making it. Great. Okay, our next question is going to come from Janice Seitzer. Jenny, are you with us still? Oh, there you are. Yes, it just took a second to unmute. <laughs> I like so um, my question is kind of a, a, a little bit of an add-on for what um, Lindsay was just talking about, but and sort of had it earlier when she was talking about animation, but I know um, it looked like she was using an Adobe tool when she was doing her drawing. Adobe tools are obviously not inexpensive, but if you right. have kids that want to learn or teens that want to learn, do you have recommendations for tools that they could practice um, digital animation or digital drawing with that maybe wouldn't be quite as expensive or some of the, I know Adobe has some yeah. sort of beginner tools um, that you might, you know, recommend that's a good one for them to kind of start with just because we all know Adobe, you know, products are not yeah. inexpensive yeah, for like yeah. cloud and, you know, I've, I've purchased the, you know, owning the whole suite way back when you owned the whole thing before you joined the cloud service and it's, you know, a pretty chunk of change. So yeah, totally. yeah. I lately I've gotten into I got an iPad recently which I know also isn't like super cheap but I know a lot of people have them but procreate on the the iPad is wonderful I just started getting into it recently and I forget I think it's like 10 bucks or something a one-time yeah, thing there's my, yeah. my procreate okay. hey wow. good. That good. I, yeah. I, I highly recommend that and probably as as is lately I've gotten into like getting paper like magnetic screen, screen protectors because they make it a little bit more like drawing traditionally and I just recently got this big board that you could insert it into so you can kind of really get in there and draw on it this thing called like sketchboard pro but procreate's a great tool as far as animating I don't know if it's as robust and I'm not sure what the best animation ones are but there are really competitive yeah app, app software now for sure I, I use Photoshop for work. It's kind of like a work standard, but lately I have been using Procreate for work too. It's definitely a professional tool and accessible for, for right. kind of beginners also. Yeah. Well, and I think a lot of people have iPads, even if it's not necessarily the inexpensive tool option. So the app for it's not necessarily like that part's an inexpensive add-on if you have it. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Thank well, you. And, and I think, cause I think we started before uh, you know, a lot of these apps and stuff have come out, you know, sort of like, so since we've been professionals, I don't know what the like cool thing for people is, but I will also say that it's like, you know, it's okay if the program isn't perfect, you yeah, know, as long course. as you can do something on it, you'll, you'll sort of learn and, and, and sort of have fun. And, and I think that, and I also think that one of the nice things, it's like iMovie, just, you know, if you're edited, if you're just want to make a movie on your phone, just make it an iMovie, it's free. Um, if you have a Mac, um, because uh, it's it's really simple and and it'll even though your movies won't be like unassailably professionally <laughs> edited you know uh i i think they'll they're good enough for youtube um so uh, i would just say don't maybe uh sort of like anything is good at first you know and then sort of as you get a taste for it as your kids get a taste for it you might sort of like want to like that's it could be a good birthday present or christmas present or something is like the more advanced version of that thanks thank you guys Okay, our next question is going to come from um, T and her daughter Tegan. T. Sorry about T. that. <laughs> oh, perfect. Hey. Gotcha. Hi. Um, so I was wondering uh, what inspired or what was the thought process for the soundtrack of the movie because I really like the music. Oh, great. I love the lovely music. Um, this, the inspiration was just songs that I love. <laughs> or songs that we love because um i think that's sort of the overall um sort of philosophy of the whole movie is like stick the movie is filled is make it as bursting with love as we can possibly do because sometimes a, a a music cue would fit for a moment like either emotionally or whatever 
but I just didn't like the song, you know, or, or like we didn't like the song as, as a group. And it was like, we just wanted to fill it in with every song that we loved ever. Um, and then uh, and then sort of narrowed it down to the ones that worked for the moment and, and didn't. And it was really cool working with like um, Alex Leahy, who did, who was just an, an artist that we loved. And then we work with her on this ending song and she did such a great job with it. Um, but it was, but that, that was fun too, because we got to sort of like call out for people that whose work we liked and see if they wanted to collaborate with us. And that was like, it was really fun to work with. I agree. I feel like the music is a, another character of the movie in a way. It's really, really fantastic. Um, our, uh, we have another question from Tessa Smith and her uh, cute, adorable family, including her pug. Hello. Yes. Khaleesi, our one-eyed pug. He's very loud. So. Oh my God. <laughs> we love so, him. She starts to snort. I apologize. Uh, first of all, love the movie. It's still my favorite animated film of the entire year. Oh, it held okay. through the whole year. Um, thank you. I'm it's sure it's not you. Mission, so thank you. <laughs> well, well, I want to say thank you for putting my quote on the poster, even though I'm sure that wasn't you. Hey. But, <laughs> it's very exciting. Uh, I would love to know, I think you know. Wants to show her face. Oh, she wants to see her face. Okay. Um, I would love to know that <laughs> she's like, don't let me. She's being boy. Like, it feels like pretty immediately uh, everyone loved this movie, like I said, us included. And I would love to know how that felt when just, I mean, it was like immediately fresh on Rotten Tomatoes and just massive, oh my God. massive fans. It was the, it was <laughs> the best. <laughs> you know, because, you, you know, it, it, just because, you know, the, especially me and, and especially the group, the sort of group of filmmakers that were sort of responsible for the movie and stuff, like we're so audience focused. Like we are happy when the audience is happy. So we tested it a bunch and we wanted to make sure that all the jokes landed and that all the emotions landed and stuff like that. And sort of like, we're really, I'm really not a filmmaker or none of us are Jeff, Chris and Phil who are like, we'll make what we want and let the audience sort it out. So we're like, I hope you like this thing we made. Um, so um, so for us, it was very validating. Lindsay, how did you feel? <laughs> I know mean, it felt so, it felt so good. I, I, you know, it'd been so long. We talked about how long it takes to make and, you know, Mike and I were working on it since 2015. So I felt, yeah, so close to it that I couldn't see it with fresh eyes. Like I didn't know what it's like to watch this movie for the first time and I believed in it. And we, yeah, like we'd seen test audiences and it seemed like that went well. So. We're like, oh, I hope this goes well, but you just don't. It's hard to see it with fresh eyes. So letting like the world see it with fresh eyes. No, it's, it was crazy. And it was so surreal to like, this is my first time in a big, like a leadership role where I'm very involved with like who the characters are and how they look and seeing fan art. Like we were looking a lot online at like fan art or people doing cosplay and seeing a ton of it. And it was super surreal and so meaningful. And we were you know a lot of us were like texting back and forth like messages that we were seeing and it was yeah it was very like touching and yeah very surreal it was looked it was the coolest thing and yeah, we're super happy with seeing how it relates to people because that's what's so cool about working on these movies is they have such a huge audience like you get to make art but it gets to like connect with people and that's like the, this cool ingredient that we hadn't really seen for like five years and so yeah it's been it's been great well, it's amazing. Seriously, congratulations, guys. Oh, thank thank you. you. Thank you. It's got to be amazing to finally see all your hard work come together on the big screen and, you know, and people love it. Um, yeah, we have no, a question. We have a question from Christy from Lights, Camera, Mom. Hi, guys. And actually, it's uh, kind of a perfect segue off of Tessa's question, um, because I agree. My, our family loves the movie. We just watched it again this morning. And, you know, and even on the back, best animated movie of the year, you know, all those <laughs> accolades. Do you guys feel like there's more Mitchell stories to be told? Is there any hope for for more Mitchells in the future? Because we're hoping so. <laughs> OK, well, there's a couple of things. One on the very Blu-ray you're holding. Also, what's how's it looking in there i haven't seen on the inside of one yet so if any of you have it open let me see it um but anyway uh, <laughs> um the uh um the yes i mean the, in the very blu-ray you're holding there is a katie made short that is basically like a continuation of her story um and like going to college and and, and meeting jade and all that stuff um and it's great and then also if you pause the movie at a certain frame i'll let you guys figure it out there are a list of sequel options. Uh, you know, there's like 25 different sequels. So vote for your favorite. 
Or maybe, you know, you and your family can like make that on a weekend and see if it'll be cool. Maybe you can make, you know, the Mitchells versus the army of clones, you know, using uh, a bunch of trick photography and mirrors and stuff. Um, uh, and then, um, and then, yeah. And then sort of, there's always conversations and stuff, you know, about, about um, what's happening next. And I might not make it myself cause I'm tired, but, um, but there's a lot of great artists like Guillermo Martinez and, and wonderful artists who got their start on the Mitchells who have that story in their DNA and, and, and hopefully art will be interested in making one of those, um, one of the 25 we listed, including one called Oops All Furbies, which might be, this, which might be it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I don't know. I can't wait to find that. That's going to be so fun to look for. <laughs> Great. Our next question is going to come from Carolina from what she says. Hi, thank you for having me and for uh, showing us how to draw this. Um, I am not an artist, so I'm not going to show it. No. What are you talking about? Look at the, you look at your background. You're killing it. Blue. Uh -oh. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> um, my question is, um, so the cast is amazing. Like, I mean, you guys have an incredible cast. And so what was the process of finding the right people to match these characters that you, I mean, you know, have grown to, to love and know and, and create. So how was that process and how was the, the making of the film with these, um, with these incredible actors? Oh man, it was, we so lucked out. I mean, like it, it, it's, we got, you know, cause like Abby Jacobson is all of the things that Katie is. And she's also an amazing actress. Like it's, it's like, she went to art school. She lived, grew up in the Midwest, you know, like um, uh, she, she, you know, uh, eventually, ended up successful and all that stuff like so um so and so all of her improvisations that she would come up with were really natural and like could just fit right into the movie because she is that person um so that was really fun um you know uh Danny McBride was wonderful as Rick and that whole sequence um of him staring you know we're gonna make constant eye contact you know all that stuff is just Danny started as just Danny in the room just being like keep your eyes hey hey no no you don't have to squint just just look at me you know oh machi's got it there you go like all of that stuff was just was just sort of set in a room and then we built a scene around it um and it was really fun um maya rudolph was wonderful olivia coleman is like the world's greatest like like every time we recorded with olivia coleman it might this is going to seem like it's like um i'm being hyperbolic but this is this is a 100 fact every time we recorded with her someone in the room would be like she's incredible <laughs> you know and whether that was like chris and bill who've worked with hundreds of great actors and stuff you know um so um so it was it was a real joy and and sometimes there it would be really nice and i wish actually i wish we brought the actors in sooner so we could have done more of it um because the actors came along about you know when we started making the movie for real but i wish they were here earlier so they could have informed the characters more in the script phase you know um, but there were ways to sort of bounce back and forth and use their funny little improvisations. And like Maya was always singing. Um, so we got like some like singing stuff. And if if we were to do a sequel, I would, you know, just have a Maya Rudolph karaoke, uh, you know, explosion because she's like the world's best singer. Um, uh, so, so yeah, that, that's the answer. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Um, Amy Fulcher from As the Bunny Hops. Amy, do you have anything for us? Well, yeah, I would love to talk Easter eggs because we got yeah. to talk to you before, Mike, before the film was out. And I know animators love to stuff the film through. I'm wondering, are there any that are still hidden that you haven't seen brought out yet? Oh, that's a that's a great question. Um, I, I You know what hasn't been? And it some of the stuff, you know, because when you're making something in 3D, you meticulously like design, like say, say you meticulously design a wallet like this. But then in the shot, you only see it at like this angle, but there's all kinds of cool stuff on the wallet. So if you could extract it and look at it up close, you could see what it, I've run the be well. Um, you could see what it, um, what, what it, what it is. So um, Katie's, uh, on Katie's laptop, there's like a bunch of weird film references. Um, uh, some to really obscure Swedish movies that we love and and some to like more you know sort of obvious movies so if you if you look really hard on Katie's laptop you can see some of those and there's also um that is the number one thing I think and also I think some uh, there's a uh, there's a there's a there's a there's a reference to Wes Anderson movies on Katie's backpack that I that I haven't 
seen anyone make yet, but is is really obvious if you know the movie um, and you're looking for it. So those are a couple. Awesome. Um, we're running short on time, everybody. So if you haven't asked a question and you really are dying to, please chat me in the chat function. Um, but we have our next question is going to be coming from Taddy from Cool Mom Cool Tips. Hello again. Thank you so much for this wonderful movie. I have to echo what everyone's sharing because we truly enjoyed it. And uh, visually, it was very impactful for me. Somehow it took me back to when I was in high school drawing all sorts of things all over the place and my room was a big junk, <laughs> collection of junk like like the movie somehow feels like so but in a beautiful okay. way so i was very curious to know if there were certain influences that brought this type of drawing to life i know lindsay had shared that you you were celebrating imperfections which is another beautiful layer to the movie but visually were did you have any specific influences to come to bring this to life yeah, totally. I mean, we that was one of the things that we got really excited about early on is that we could pull info because uh, oftentimes there's like a lot of animation movies like have the same influences where it's like, oh, the you know, with Disney movies in the past and stuff like that, which are wonderful. But we were like, let's have crazy influences from all over the world. So we, you know, we were trying to be influenced by, you know, teenagers drawings um, you know, Lindsay had a friend that did these really cool, weird, you know, um, uh, teenage drawings that we were looking at. And like, uh, James Terrell is an installation artist who's very fancy, um, who would blanch if he knew that our dumb cartoon <laughs> was using his uh, million dollar installations. Um, uh, and, and Lindsay found a bunch of great photographers um that we really loved. Like, who are, who are your, who are some of the- Yeah, uh, th there's like a bulk of them that are like, photographers from like early color photos where I think it wasn't as like thought of as as tasteful or something um but like Stephen Shore William Eggleston were a couple big ones and a lot of them like Stephen Shore had a book too where it was like his travels across the country and he's documenting where he's staying and like a photo on the wall of a toilet and it had that kind of spirit like the food you're eating kind of before that was like a, a, a trend but like the food you're eating and as it is and things that were yeah like or this kind of early color photography, but things that felt really observed. We looked at a lot of photography. Um, uh, Mary Frey was one of them, mm -hmm. Thomas Struth, the people that are capturing photos that feel, it was like the closest reference point to like your actual home photos. Cause we were just trying to make it feel really real and not feeling like, sometimes art is like a really beautiful portrayal of something. And we wanted like art like marks on things, but the, the feel of it to be something that's more like a home photo that's imperfect and one then thing, put some strokes on it sorry go ahead one thing that no 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 problem one thing that was really cool that Lindsay did is that she would tell her artists like don't google bedroom don't google teenagers bedroom because you will see this gorgeous etsy bedroom she's like just go on craigslist and google teenager bedroom and then you would see real teenager bedrooms and they were always a disaster <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah we look at like re like real estate listings or like if we were designing a couch it was like let's go to craigslist let's go to michigan that's where it's set and let's see what couches are for sale because that's going to be a better idea what couches are in your house now because you usually don't have things that you bought at the same time from the year you're living in likely you have something that's old or maybe it's a hand-me-down or you know and that's something we're trying to celebrate of like human stories because like Maybe the couch that your mom gave to you, you can't find quickly if you're looking for images of couches, but there's a story there. Maybe there's memories and stuff. So that's what we're always chasing. 